Hey, profs. Welcome on in. My name's Rob Lightfoot, proud two-time alum the Rick Edelman College of Communication, class of 2000-2001. This is Beyond the Brown and Gold. I'm Jessica Kennedy. I'm the co-host here, also a two-time proud Rowan alum, class of 2008 from the Rick Edelman College of Communication and Creative Arts, and 2015 from the College of Education. Thanks so much for joining us today. Rowan Radio 89.7 WGLS-FM presents Beyond the Brown and Gold, a show that highlights the lives and memories of Glassboro State and Rowan University alumni. Now, here are your hosts, Rob Lightfoot and Jessica Kennedy. Jess, I am so excited for today's Beyond the Brown and Gold. Tell me more. We've got one of the most favorite humans you'll ever meet. I know. We're not really supposed to have favorites, though, I right? know, but we do. I know. Right? We shouldn't we tell I mean, the whole world no, that. All alumni are special. Yes. We, we love all of them. Some are just more special. Correct. <laughs> yeah. So today we're interviewing Mr. Jeffrey Hickman, who's got a, a pretty cool gig. Jeff is a 1995 alum, and he's the manager of Disney College and International Recruitment at the most magical place on earth. Which is? <laughs> no, okay. I know what oh, it is. You I know. know what it is. Disney. And the cool thing is, to soak you into this little story, how about he's been living with somebody that he met here at WGLS for quite some time? Not only living, but married to oh, somebody. Oh, gosh. Oh, boy. <laughs> That's a little bit of a different distinction. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Jeff not only has an incredible, magical career at Disney, but he's also a very involved alum and donor and friend of the university. So we're, we're so excited to have you here with us and to share more about Jeff's story, Rowan, Disney. We play a fun game. You'll hear more. <laughs> Well, Jeff, we're so excited to have you here today. You've traveled all the way from Florida to be with us. It's great to be Very home. Very special. It's great to be home. We're, out. we're excited to have you. And Rob and I, a little secret about us is that we know you pretty well. Um, so my concern is that we have so much to talk about in so little time. So we have to squeeze so much of Jeff Hickman into a short amount of time, but we'll do our best to... To get everything we need to out there. This is like a three-hour segment, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 plenty, yeah. Yeah, we should have plenty of time to get and everything. And that's after editing. But thanks so much for, for joining us and being here today. Can you tell the listeners um, who haven't had the pleasure of knowing you as much as Rob and I, um, you know, where you're from, how you found your way to Rowan? Yeah, I'm born and raised in Pittman, New Jersey, about two miles away. So um, that's, where, that's where I grew up. And it's interesting, in looking at, where I wanted to go to college, I had applied to Rutgers, York College, and Rowan at the time. Both my brother and my sister went to Rutgers, so naturally I did not go there. But York College was a consideration for me, and it was actually a school that my parents were really pushing, and I say that with love, because they wanted me to get what they perceived was the the true, authentic college experience. The living going on, away. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Living on a college campus. And um, you know, I, I had grown up playing a lot of sports at Rowan being on this campus for other activities, and it just always felt comfortable to me. It always felt like home to me. So that is really that is really the reason why I decided to come here. It just felt like the natural fit. And I remember, I mean, to this day, I remember having the conversation with my mom. She's like, if you're going to go to Rowan, I want to make sure you get active on campus because (laughs) I really want you to have that true on-campus experience. And um, I'd say I did. I was (laughs) obviously very active through my entire college career. And um, as as I'm sure I'll share in a little bit, this this school played a major role in who I've become today as a professional. So did you commute here? I commuted. Did you walk here? I could have. I mean, I could have walked. I could yeah. have ridden a tricycle. Um, yeah. I could have gone a, a different way. Um, that would, that's kind of a funny, like, yeah. thinking of what that would look like, Jeff. No, as a grown a up riding a tricycle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe not. Um, maybe not a maybe not a good choice of transportation there. But uh, but no, I, yeah, two miles away basically. So it was a quick quick to and from campus but the reality of it is the only time I was home was really to study and to sleep and you came in you studied radio tv film so I came in initially my freshman year I was really good in math of all things in high school and I came in so I started as a math major and very quickly realized I didn't want to do anything to do with math I didn't want to was that the hope to be a teacher I didn't know what I wanted to do you just knew you liked math yeah I knew I was it was something I was good at you know I I got here and realized, you know, calculus with physics was not my thing. Oh. So <laughs> I feel like algebra is where I just started to go down. Yeah. I was like, oh, nope, don't understand these X's and Y's. That's really confusing. Yeah. 
I mean, it was just tough. So I, I naturally, I'm, I'm like, all right, well, what are some of the other majors? I, I stumbled across communications. I felt like, you know what, that feels like a, a pretty good fit for me as well. And then probably about a month into uh, my time, my first semester as a freshman, found WGLS, found Frank Hogan, and really the rest is history. And did you jump right into, I know you were active here in, in the sports department. Do you jump right into that or start start with like on-air shows with just music? Yeah, I started. Um, so I went through training. I didn't have, I, I did literally sports updates my first semester, okay. freshman year um, to get on air after training. And then I continued to do sports updates my second semester. Um, didn't start with the sports broadcasting, the play-by-play and, and color until my sophomore year, but did start a show. It's funny. We I called it I called it Waking Up Seeing Double. It was a Sunday morning <laughs> rock show where I played double shots of That's rock. a very cool and concept. And so we named it because it was like an 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Sure. Sunday morning show. And so I'm like, Waking Up Seeing Double, because most people probably are doing that. Yeah. <laughs> I want to talk <laughs> about, since since the three of us are all WGLS alums. Mm -hmm. I want to kind of dig into that and that sort of like the culture that existed back then because it's not a, you know, it's not a fraternity or sorority. Has very much the streamlined, uh, you know, idea, the same norms, I guess, behind it. And we were all here at different times. All Mm -hmm. here at different times, but we all sort of formed those strong relationships that are that are existed here at the station there and those friend groups that were here. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about what that looked like for you and active activity you know, being an active person on campus, but then also like how that helped your your education piece. Yeah, if if I wasn't in the classroom and I wasn't sleeping at home yeah. or studying, I was I was at WGLS. So when I first started here, it was it was behind Savitz. It was the old Oh wow. It was the old WGLS studios. And then a couple of years later we shifted over obviously to the new studios as well. But the culture there was what made it special, the friendships that you developed was so special. So, I mean, I go back, you know, Mike Shute was the original sports director um, that I was under at that time and was such a great friend and set me up for amazing success when I took that over when he graduated. But I, to this day, I'm, I'm still in very close contact with eight, nine, ten of those that I worked with at WGLS. Um, and not all just sports. I mean, really across the board in the station. We had a, we had a membership in the station at the time, probably – 100 maybe wow. 100 students so it was it was awesome and it was it was very much like a family mm-hmm. you came in after a class and everybody was there you just and came you here just, you, you ate together out. you yeah. cried I at night probably cried more than <laughs> Oh, <laughs> we cried together. I, we I don't, what, what are we together. crying about? I don't know. I, I didn't <laughs> cry. Jeff, there's always something to cry about. <laughs> you skipped classes? You? No, we didn't skip classes. No, 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 we went to class. We went to class. But you weren't just really active in GLS. You were active in a lot of other areas on campus, right? Yeah, I, yeah, I was. Yeah, I was most active here, to be honest with you. Um, but dabbled a little bit. I actually played tennis here, and uh, I played tennis here my freshman year. Uh, because I played tennis at Pittman High School. So I, I definitely played some tennis. Um, and then it, the tennis program kind of went away, but there were opportunities to play at the club level. So I I did play tennis, um, but I, boy, I spent a lot of time here. Yeah. I, I spent we a lot can of relate. time here. Yeah. yeah. We still spent a lot of time here. Yeah, <laughs> I still love it. If I was not a thousand miles away, I may be spending a lot yeah. of time yeah, here. Yeah, that'd be great. I may, can be you on, I may be knocking on Derek Jones's door and say, I want to do a show on Sunday morning called Waking Up Seeing Double. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I think he'd allow that. <laughs> now, how did you meet your wife? So your wife is also an alum. So we we refer to uh, alumni couples as, or that met at Rowan or Glassboro as prof sweethearts. So how did you meet your prof sweetheart? Was it here? How did you, how did you connect? It's so interesting story, and I'm going to start with saying that today is literally our 26th wedding anniversary. So happy That's anniversary, a, wow. Steph. I love happy you. anniversary. Oh, um, yay, Steph. But, um, you know, we talk about the the community that is that was built at the time and that continues to this day with friendships and whatnot um, for, for members of WGLS. Um, that's that's a biggie, I would say. Yeah, it's, adult, so, it's a pretty big. Um, it's the best friendship I, that I, there is, know, right? I would I would definitely say. So, you know, st- I had worked a part-time job at, at s- then Super Fresh, which I think has been gone for many, many years, a supermarket in Glassboro. And Steph would come in with her roommates. And I, um, for lack of a better way of putting it, had no game and had, I mean, I, I thought, wow, she's cute and I'd love to talk to her, but uh, I'm afraid to. So I didn't. Uh, ironically, one of her roommates, Steph, is, Steph was an education major. She, she teaches elementary school today. Um, but one of her roommates was a radio TV film major who wanted to join WGLS and and talk Steph into coming over 
to train with her. Okay. So after seeing Stefan super fresh many, many times, and again, not having the courage to say a word to her, I'm standing up because I led training at the time. So I'm standing up and I'm welcoming people into the station and in walks her roommate and in walks Steph. And I'm like, <sighs> mind blown <laughs> <laughs> that's so, incredible yeah so i mean we we met we met in the station i was joking earlier i i literally trained steph um we have such a similar prof yeah. like story because i trained my husband who's also a wgls alum so that's how we now, connected see, I didn't know that. yep mm -hmm. me and jeff were the same person pretty much yeah mm -hmm. i mean both love disney yeah, yeah. that's true <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so we we did. We we met here and um, we we dated a couple of years. We got married out of college and 26 years later, here we are. Now, was she taken right away? Was it the super fresh or the GLS piece? Um, I think, honestly, she's going to hate that I said this. I had I had to break her down a little bit. <laughs> you know, I, I had to. I was like a I was like a, a chicken pecking at an ankle. Right. So <laughs> hi, hi, hi. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> Sometimes that's what you got to do. It worked. It worked. Love mean, you, clearly, Steph. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> clearly it worked. So I think you did a good job pecking at her so you, you mentioned frank hogan is one of the folks for, for, for folks that don't know frank hogan was the station manager here at uh wgls retired a couple years back still great guy we all stay still stay in touch with frank um who are some of the other folks maybe on campus some of the other professors or other mentors that you might have had across campus in different uh, you know, avenues oh my gosh um Dr. Coletta with film classes. I love that man. I had him multiple times. He is definitely someone that stood out. Um, Ned, stay, you know, stands out. Um, oh my gosh. I mean, there were. Oh my gosh. I'm just. It was probably just, there's so many. There were so many. Yeah. And it was. It feels so long ago. <laughs> yeah. But don't um, age yourself. No, no, for mm -hmm. for sure. But. Um, you, you know, there were so many there were so many professors at the time who I may have had just one off, but still had that impact on me. Hundred percent, yeah. Um, so it was, yeah. But I, you know, Frank obviously, Frank to me, Frank was was absolutely a mentor. He was my first mentor. I look at all of my success that I had at WGLS and, and a lot of things that I was blessed with when I was at Rowan University. He was a big part of that. So I'll be forever grateful to that man. Um, so he, he is always going to stand out as kind of that elite individual that I was interacting with day in and day out. Um, but, uh, but certainly there were others. So what was the goal post college? Were you hoping to do on air work? What, what was, what were you really hoping the next step would be? Yeah. So all along the way I had this, this, um, this desire to work for Disney, you know, which is the, which is iron, which is ironic because, I was here. I was very active. I was doing play-by-play -play for Rowan football and men's basketball. By the way, at a very good time to be doing it when yes. they were competing for national championships pretty much every year. So I was lucky that way. Um, I was pretty good at it. Um, I had, after, after I graduated from Rowan, I had job offers to go into sports broadcasting to start, to start out. And, but Which, by the way is really impressive because it is not, I mean, at least when I graduated, it was not easy to turn a radio, TV, and film degree into on-air work. So that's an incredible thing that you were able to even just get job offers at that yeah, point. Yeah, it's, you know, sending out, back then you literally sent out demo tapes, right? So I, I must have sent out 200 demo tapes all yeah. across the country. So I had interviews, had a couple of job offers. Um, I did work on-air part-time at Light Rock 96.9 in Atlantic City, WFPG. I was there um, doing weekend shifts for about, probably, gosh, probably about three years too. So I was getting some professional on-air experience down there. I love it. I, I To this day, I miss this. I miss being, being behind a microphone. But but I just, there was always that little tug of the shirt, Disney, Disney, Disney. And um, I, I didn't necessarily know what I wanted to do with Disney, honestly. The, to, to blend in broadcasting and Disney, that would have been living the dream, but yeah. that's also really hard. But um but I didn't necessarily know what I wanted to do and how I started with Disney was a bit off the beaten beaten path. So were you like a Disney kid? So like did your family were you one of those families that went to Disney like every year? Like what was the Disney draw for you? It was that. It was we vacationed in two spots when I grew up. We were either in Ocean City, New Jersey for a week on twenty fourth Street mm. or we were going to Disney. So that was that was our thing growing up and that's really where where I got you know, I kind of got that, for lack of a better way of putting it, pixie dust in the in the veins, right? Mm -hmm. Running running through my blood. That's really, I just felt like it would be a cool place to work. There was, it was massive. There was a lot of opportunity in my eyes. And um, it would be a place that I felt, you know, I'd be really happy working here. And how did you eventually make your way there? So I, 
I finished up at Rowan. I went to Temple University to study for a master's degree in hospitality management. And I, at that time, I started working as a part-time manager with the Disney stores. Um, and the irony there is I am not a retail guy. <laughs> like, if I'm working an outside retail, I get eaten alive. If I was in a big box store or if I was in a traditional store in a mall, it would not have worked out. But Disney, the, the focus there, not that it's not in those other places, but the focus is so much more on the people side of it. It is driving the, the guest experience. It's, it's hopefully effectively leading and inspiring your cast members who are working in that store. That's what jazzed me. That's what I loved about it. So I started with the Disney stores, and then when I finished up with Temple – had opportunities to um, to head to Florida and and uh, and start my career at Walt Disney World in retail management before eventually getting over to recruitment. Wow! So you didn't even like the retail side. <laughs> that's kind of amazing, actually. That that's what took you to where you are today. We won't tell. We won't tell the mouse. Not that I didn't like it. Yeah. But, right. 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 But it. But it, there's and, and the thing is with Disney. If if we've been to Disney, I know the two of you yeah. have. Um, I say this with love, but I, I've always thought at it as if, if you are effectively leading people and they're enjoying what they're doing, they're providing great service. Yeah, yeah, that absolutely. merchandise is going to sell itself. Yeah. And yeah. everybody yes. walks out of out of a park with a bag of merchandise. Oh, right? absolutely. Yeah. Sometimes a few bags. Yes. And, then, and then what was – so I know you're not interviewing with Mickey and Minnie when you go down there, but here you are. You're interviewing for like your dream job. Talk to us about that process and what that looked like. My experience at Rowan, if you're familiar with the six degrees of Kevin Bacon, it's yes. like the six degrees of Rowan University for me because there are so many paths that had had such positive impact on me when I was here. And this was another one. So I was probably a junior and I was sitting in an office. I think I was going to speak with an academic advisor and on the table was a Rowan alumni magazine. And in that magazine, there was a page of different business cards from alumni working in different places. And one of the business cards happened to be from uh, Dottie Gourlay was her name. She was a professional recruiter at Walt Disney World. And I'm like, Poo, I've got to reach out to her. So I reached out to Dottie and really long story short, um, Dottie turned into a mentor for me. Dottie really was the one who provided advice on the experience I needed. The you know She really encouraged me to think about Temple in grad school as well, knowing that I would be coming out as a young leader. She's truly the one who set me up for success to interview for positions at Walt Disney World because it was not a simple transfer from the stores to Walt Disney World. I had to interview for positions down there, and she ultimately is the one who kind of paved the way for me. So... Um, networking. <laughs> if you ever get a chance to interact with me, I'll always preach networking because I'm a, I'm a poster child for it. On a scale of one to ten, how hard is it to actually secure a job with Disney? Uh, it's it can be it can be pretty hard if you're looking something you know more you know along the lines of your profession, your major. You know, I mean, you're talking hundreds and hundreds of applications over maybe a one or two week period for a given position. Wow. So there's. And that's where we're we're blessed, you know, the power of the brand, right? There's a lot of people who are high affinity Disney who would love to work for the company. For sure. You know, so um, it's, they get a good discount. It's competitive. But the thing is, though, it, it is. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> discount and park admission and all that good stuff. But um, it, it it really is about making sure you've just got the experience that is listed in a job description. You know, if there's eight required qualifications you, to be a viable and competitive candidate, you probably need all eight. You don't just come back as an alum and just, you know, visit the campus. But you're still very tied to us in that networking capacity. Talk to us about what you're doing here with students on campus. Yeah, I am, um, again, any opportunity I can to engage with students and to be back on campus, um, whether it's here in person or virtually, I'm all in. Um, I think you both know that. I love it. So to, today, um, I've got some student engagement um, around our Disney College program experience. So I'm doing a presentation there. I'm going to be talking to some faculty as well. Rowan is actually one of our, our top schools in terms of student participation on the Disney College program every semester. We have anywhere between 20 to 30 students from Rowan wow. uh, on that program every semester, which is awesome. Love that. Um, so I do reach out to students who are on the program to offer opportunities to network with me. If I'm back on campus, if I can get in front of students, if I can get in front of, of, of people to just give them the opportunity to network, I'm all in on that. You know, Steph and I have a have a scholarship that we're very proud of that's tied directly into the School of Communications and WGLS specifically. That is something we are so proud of because, again, this place had just such, I mean, just such profound in, impact on our lives. 
You're also on the alumni board of directors. Mm. Honestly, Jeff is one of our only alumni board of directors participants right now that's really not local to us, but still a super active member trying to find any way to give back and be involved even all the way from Florida. So it kind of worked out because when you joined, not that COVID could make really anything work out, but in an ironic way, we went virtual with a lot of our alumni board initiatives during COVID. So it was a great way to engage with alums who weren't local and that's kind of where we where we got you. And how long have you overseen the Disney College program? So I've been with Disney a total, I hit 25 years this year. Boy, time flies. But so I've been with the company for 25 years. I've been on the recruitment side, our college and international recruitment team for 19 of those 25 in various capacities. I've worn, as they say, a lot of different Mickey Mouse ears over the years. Oh, so, that's cute. Not like hats. You know, ears. not hats. Cute. It's always ears. Yeah. She's going to steal that for I know. Uh, I feel like I need to start using it. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> but no, I've been, I mean, I've been a recruiter at various levels. I will tell you, there is nothing more special to me to be able to come back to my alma mater and represent Disney. I don't know if it gets much better than that in my eyes. So that's really cool. I've been in leadership roles on our team probably for about a dozen of those 19 years. So um, I'm one of, you know, a handful of managers who oversees all of our college and international recruitment. And recently... We were very excited to see that you received the Disney Legacy Award. Hmm. Can you talk a little bit about that and what that means to you? Yeah, that was. I'm looking at my hand shaking. Right I know now, you just look thinking nervous. About it. So I, I will tell you, in my lifetime, I think I'm hard to stump and I'm hard to surprise. That was a moment that, boy, I was, I was floored, surprised. It was a surreal experience for me because. So the Legacy Award basically is uh, for Walt Disney Parks and Resorts employees. It is a Lifetime Achievement Award. It's the highest honor you can win working at any one of our parks and resorts across the world. The top 1% of our of our cast get it. So wow. to think that I'm in that is, um, gosh, it's humbling. It's the definition of an honor, um, to say the very least. But that day... We were there to meet together as a team, and most of us are working from home right now, but we do gather a couple times a year, so you're, you know, we're going through regular meeting information, and suddenly, you know, they're announcing we have a legacy recipient in the room, and they were just talking, and you, you never, obviously, you don't think it's you, you, don't think it's you. you didn't you're think not, a little bit no, it was no. you? No, <laughs> no, I mean, you're, you're, you're having to be nominated by your peers. It's a very arduous process to select those who have been nominated. So long again. I would have been looking around the room like, who I mean, is, I mean, who well, is but, it? But the thing is, we have so many on our team that are, that are deserving of of where if you wear a special name tag, it's a blue name tag. We have so many in our in our on our team that are deserving of it, in my opinion. So the room was divided. There was a wall in the back of the room. So the wall starts elevating. So they're bringing up the wall, and. Um, it didn't hit me until it this didn't hit. Very, very so it, it didn't. Uh-huh. It, well, it's, it's what? Well, this is this is how this is how we roll. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I need to get there. Um, but so the wall goes up, and um, it it didn't it didn't hit me. And I think my name was even announced before. But Steph, my two daughters, Sarah and Caitlin, were there, and I locked eyes on Steph, and it just. Y- hey. you know, it just hit me. It's like, oh my, oh my gosh, what's oh. what's happening here? Oh my gosh! So they kept amazing. that secret from you. Yeah, and my and oh, Steph, I'm telling you, she said she had known it for a good six weeks. Wow, wow! <laughs> I'm like, how did you keep that secret? That's impressive. It has to be so cool to work at the mouse. I mean, you figure even after all of these years, this company is known for not only brand but service and all of the pieces they put together. Like, what is your most enjoyable part of working at Disney? I, I think you just outlined it. I think. Regardless of what you do at Disney, what you're doing is is really taking people out of the real world, which, as we know, the real world, especially the past few years, mm-hmm. is just yeah. crazy. But it's taking people out of that environment and putting them into, again, a proverbial fantasy land, getting getting them away from local news or national news and, and putting them in a, in a time hopefully they can enjoy themselves, enjoy themselves with family, have experiences that no other company can provide. It is a very unique company. There, there are other, I mean, when we just talk theme parks, for example, there are a lot of other great theme parks out there. I don't think anybody does it like we do. Yeah. They create you that don't. experience. That experience that they create for people is wild. Mm-hmm. It is. It is kind of wild. I So... Uh, maybe you all are familiar, but Ed Streb, uh, he was oh, a prof- yes. retired professor. Ed was awesome, too. Yes, I had Ed. He was so good. One of my favorites. We actually had him for a virtual homecoming a few years back, but he taught the persuasion and social influence class. And I remember one of the classes, we spent an hour and a half talking about Disney and all of the kind of magical things like that the, the garbage can system is underground, so you never see a piece of trash. Like just all of the things you don't think of. Um, I was recently there in February. I 
bought brand new white Nikes, which was really ambitious because I have two small children that spill food. And I, my shoes, Jeff, were so clean when I came home after a week at Disney. It was like I never walked in them. I'm like, the grounds, like just every detail is so particular and perfect. It's just the care that they put into things is so evident. And I think I just, and so think about that. I think I just saw on the news that we had about 13 million people visit the Magic Kingdom this past year alone. 13 million people. So when you think about cleanliness, for example, mm-hmm. it's hard to how keep in the that world clean, does that right? happen? So I th- it's our people, for mm-hmm. sure. I think it is when you walk into that park, guests know that Disney is is, is known for cleanliness. Yeah, so you want to respect part. it. You yeah. do your part. Mm-hmm. You just do. Yeah. And from a leadership perspective, how do you keep those folks sharpened? Like, how do you keep those frontline customer service folks? Like, there's got to be some sort of Your secret sauce. Yeah. Secret sauce that you can share with us that takes place down there that maybe others can sort of implement. Gosh, I think it's just, I, I think it's training. It's setting them up for success to make sure they know their role in the show. Um, that's a part of it. And then just leadership and engagement. I, that sounds, it sounds so simple, but it's true. I think making sure you're connecting with them. Not only for work purposes, but on personal level as well, getting to know your employees at that level as well, I think is critical. I, showing that you care. I, let's be honest. I think we've we've all been there before where maybe we had a manager or a leader, whether it was an internship or a part-time job or whatever it is, where we're like, oh, I'm, I'm learning some things here. Maybe not the way I'd want to lead in the future, yeah, yeah. but I'm, <laughs> I'm learning some things, right? But I do, I do think, like my team right now, I, I lead a team of recruiters and man, it is a and we all work remotely. So that creates challenges, right? I'm not walking into an office and, and pulling them together every day. Sometimes but, you can like, what I think when you work virtual, you kind of forget people are human a little yeah. bit, right? Like you you meet, oh, yeah. but yeah. it takes away that like popping into each other's office. Absolutely. I mean, I think if there's a good mix of both, that's helpful. But So our office is a, is a Teams chat. You know, we've, we've yeah. got a group Teams chat and we're on that constantly all day. Of course, we're, you know, we're meeting, of course, virtually right. and, and via Zoom, but... That the engagement piece is so critical, making them feel like they are going back to what we were talking about earlier, making them feel like they're a part of this family and something special. So as a Disney employee, is it like pretty common that everybody's like bought in? Like there's not somebody working for Disney and they're like, I mean, Disney's all right. Like everybody's pretty much like a Disney head. I'm sure that works at Disney. Is that pretty common? You know, it's funny. We at Walt Disney World alone, we have what, about 70,000 Wow. Employees slash cast members is what we call them. So um, is everyone a bit of a Disney geek after 25 years like me? Probably not. I, I think there are some that it's, it, it, it is. It's it's a job and they're doing it well and they're providing that level of guest service that's expected. But you have varying degrees. And we even see that on our college program, students who are coming in. You know, we have students who are coming in like me where they grew up and they were coming down a lot. And I just want to, I want that opportunity to work there and get that experience. And others who, you know what, I, I just think it would be cool to have Disney on my resume. I don't want to be there permanently after the program, but boy, I, that would benefit me um, having that experience. But I think what's cool about it is it recruits from other cultures too, right? So Disney recruits not only just from from the U.S., but we were talking sort of off mic about the students that are coming in from other areas and other countries that participate in, was it Epcot? Yeah, I, to, to me, I think that is a massive benefit, not only from doing a program with us where you are working with them and living with them because our international as well as our college program participants are living together in the same housing complex. That's cool. That's not a, an experience I ever had growing up. Um, I, I just think there's massive benefit to that when you think about it, um, just being exposed to different cultures. But yeah, I mean, I it is it is just one of the authentic things about working for Disney is that you you're you are in the definition of a melting pot. You're working with people from anywhere and everywhere all over the world. And oh, by the way, the guests who are coming in are pretty much also from it's the same. Over. They're yep. from all over the world as well. So I think that I think that is that's an important distinction. So when when we're doing recruitment presentations, for example, it, it is said, you know, you you have to be someone when you think everything that goes along with working for Disney and you've got to be service oriented and love working with people and you know all of those, you know, teamwork and all those things. But 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 working with people who could be very different than you, who are have different backgrounds from different places. That's a big part. You've got to be you've you just got to be open and want to go all in to that part of working for Disney too. I got to can I brag a little bit? I won't say anything. Sure. But feel free. I my I'm so I'm going to Philadelphia String Band Mummers Association, you know, the Mummers and uh you know, I paraded down Main Street. I can't Street. believe you're saying that on air because it took me like 10 years know. knowing well, you to I know that you were a We're amongst friends and it's just the three of us listening, <laughs> right, right? exactly. But yours truly paraded down Main Street USA now twice 
And then the other, as the mummer, will you mummer down Main Street? Oh, I'm mummering down Main Street. You're okay. mumming, or are you playing an instrument? Or playing what? an instrument. Okay. And the, 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 so the, he plays the sax. Here's the cool oh. part about this: is they have Disney because it's Disney. They tell you exactly when to stop, when to start. Do you have a guide that tells you the spacing that you need to have? It is precision like we've never seen. And I wish sort of Philadelphia and some other, you know, communities around the area would sort of adopt some of these 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 policies. There's probably not any tailgating before either, right? No, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> but Jeff, when you're not, you know, being an alum extraordinaire and being Disney Jeff, I know that you do some other things. Mm-hmm. What what do you do? What do you do for fun? Uh, again, play a ton of tennis. I'm still playing tennis two, two, three times a week on average. Um, and I am a, I'm a band dad. Um, okay. I'm all in. So my daughter, right. uh, my daughter, maybe she'll Sarah, be a mummer. Yeah, maybe. Hopefully. Well, my 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 daughter Sarah is a percussionist for uh, for band at her high school as a sophomore. She is the center snare drummer. That is proud dad talking. She's got some serious game, yeah. and it's really cool to watch her. So I am. Uh, in addition to being on this, the Alumni Association Board of Directors for Rowan, I am also the vice president of the Parent Boosters for the Lake Mineola High School Marching Band. All right. All right. <laughs> proud dad. I love proud Absolutely. dad Absolutely. You know, certainly, you know, my family obviously is everything to me. So any any opportunity I have to spend time, um, whether it's with Sarah, with band, um, with Steph, with different things, obviously. Caitlin, is my oldest daughter, is um, a sophomore in college in Central Florida. Um, so Where does she go? She goes, so she's finishing up at Valencia College in Central Florida. It looks like okay. it's, uh, it's Florida State University okay. for the next two years. Wow. wow. She's going to be a seminal. I feel like you should, but I feel like you could squeeze in there like a podcast. I feel like you should have like a mentorship, leadership. Yeah. Podcast. Don't you think, Jess? I feel like Disney could set that up, no? Let's do it. Yeah, let's send it in I, the tape. Let's something. record this, send let's, it in the tape, it. and then yeah. let's see what they can do for you. How about, how about this? Fun. The name of it? All ears. Oh yes, Bro. I'm, all, I'm all ears. That's not bad. That's all, not. I bad. mean, off the cuff like off that. The cuff that's like impressive. That, that is really it. good. Let's he didn't it. even write that down. No, I promise. Let's start the branding. I love it. All right, Jeff. We want to play a little game with you because, admittedly, I love me some Disney. Rob's. I I'm think a, he's an appreciator of Disney, yes. but maybe not like a Disney head. We'll get him on board. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so we want to play like a quick game with you because I could talk Disney with you until next week. Um, but I know you have to go back home to your family. So we want to do a quick fire Q&A with you. This is all opinion based. Your opinions on all things Disney. You got to say the first thing. We're going to do it quick. So the first thing that comes to mind. Favorite Walt Disney World Florida Resort. The Contemporary. Favorite classic Disney movie? Aladdin. Most yummy Disney snack? I'm going Dole Whip. Better to visit at Halloween or Christmas? Halloween. Favorite Disney property? I'm bound to say Walt Disney World, but I'm going to go off the cuff a little bit and off the beaten path and say uh, Tokyo Disneyland of a different place I visited. Favorite Disney movie character? Sebastian from The Little Mermaid. That's a unique one, right? Yeah, actually Mm -hmm. that. Not what I've thought, but okay. So mm-hmm. I have to dig into that. Yeah, <laughs> why is rapid fire? Right? Yeah, I know. Now I have to pause. Why? Love his personality. He's just real. He's kind of like Donald in a sense, but he's just he's just he's got like a, a little real, cranky. He's a little cranky, but yeah. that's okay. That's him. That's him being he's real. Just being so him. he's just fun personality. He can sing. If we're circling back, then for those of us not in the know. What is this Dole Whip you talked about before? Oh, you, you don't you, know what I don't know what that is. <laughs> are you kidding me? No, I don't know what it is. Oh, Dole, yeah, Dole Whip is magical. So it is a pineapple vanilla soft serve swirl that is um, incredible. Is it just in one park? It's Well, it was in one park for years. It was just in Magic Kingdom and Adventureland. Now they've expanded a little bit. Okay. So um, you can get it at the Polynesian Resort. You can get it at Epcot with a twist, and we'll leave it there. Oh, look at them oh, sucking right in. I love it. Okay, your favorite ride? It's a tie. Tower of Terror, Twilight Zone Tower of Terror, and the Haunted Mansion. Ooh, okay. Ooh, a little spooky. You like I spooky love the Tower rides. of Terror. That's some of my favorites. Best Disney song? You don't have to sing it, so there's no there's no pressure to <laughs> get lyrics. Or you can. Or That'd you can fun. if you'd like to do that as well. I'm going to I'm gonna go back to Aladdin and say, friend like me, Robin Williams. Most worthwhile perk to pay for? I would say right in, right at this moment, you can use Lightning Lane, which is like 15 bucks or whatever. If you're in Epcot, this is going to be really super specific, but the new Guardians of the Galaxy attraction at Epcot is phenomenal. And um, if you're there, you need to ride it. So that would be my, that would be my, my choice. Okay. Frozen one or two? Frozen one. Oh, no. Disagree. I've not seen two. <laughs> what? I know. Two's, <laughs> two's Is it because you're holding better. on to the magic of one? I'm holding on to the magic of Frozen One. <laughs> oh, I, I just can't let it go. Okay. Yeah. Wait a minute. I see what you did there. There you go. There you go. Okay. Best Pixar movie. 
Oh my gosh! All of the Toy Stories. Sorry, which Those one? Are just you got to pick one. Phenomenal movies. You, then you go with the original Toy uh, Story. I say four. They're People, great. That's not a popular opinion to say four. People think I'm terrible, but four is the best. Your favorite character to interact with at the parks? I, I got to go with the boss and Mickey. I was hoping so. Yeah, because yeah. Mickey wears different things, so you could be at Epcot and and Mickey could be wearing just his traditional, you know, outfit, and, and in other cases he could be wearing a suit, you know, so. You can see you can see Mickey uh, in different forms based on what he's wearing. Favorite restaurant? Uh, the California Grill at the Contemporary is pretty fabulous. You like the Contemporary? Yeah, that's, that's the second time. Big he's mentioned Contemporary it. fan. Best Disney villain? I'm going to go away from Aladdin this time. I'm going Hades from Hercules. All right. Okay. And if you had to choose, Star Wars: Galaxy's Edge or Toy Story Land? Not a Star Wars guy per se. Seen all the movies, but I would go with that land because that was really spectacularly done by Disney Imagineering. It is it is phenomenal. So not a Star because it was big when you were growing up. Yeah, it was, and I've seen all the movies, and I've liked I've liked the movies, but I'm not necessarily at that level. Got it. of Star Wars geekness. Got it. Mm-hmm. I get it. We appreciate you making time in your schedule to come to GLS and chat with us and share your story. Uh, my pleasure. It is. I can't tell you. It's just awesome. Awesome to be back. So really, my pleasure. Now that everyone's heard the interview with Jeff, I think maybe he'll be one of their favorite alums, too. I think so, too. I, yeah. think, I think everybody, even if they would live with another alum, they'd probably like Jeff better than the other person Oh, anyway. I forgot that I live with another yeah, alum. You, so, <laughs> yeah. so let's get your answer. Uh, I shouldn't say on air. Okay, all right. Well, but I will tell Brian, my prof sweetheart, he knows how I feel about Jeff and, and uh, Jeff's experiences with the university. So always so much fun to chat. Your favorite part was our game, right? I do. I love the game. And what was that stuff called? The, the quip? What was it? Quip? The, do, the, the, the what? Quip, the what? The dole whip. The dole whip. I'm Rob try, had never heard that? of a dole whip. Can I, I'm going to try to make that at home. I know. There's probably recipes online. No, but it but doesn't have not. the special magical dust that they probably put in there. Yeah. And like it won't, you won't be eating it at Disney. And I feel like that's part of the, the magic yeah. of like being there. Maybe I'll watch a Disney movie and make it. What is your favorite Disney movie? I don't, Ooh. I don't think I know that. Actually, I, well, growing up, I was a big fan of the the Aladdin one. Okay. Yeah, so I think I like that one Jeff's best. That's Jeff's favorite, too. Yeah, because so. I think Robin Williams, that character, the genie, was just, like, off the charts for me. Genie of the lamp. Yeah. Okay. That's me. That's my best Robin Williams impression. I, Wasn't that good? I, I, I thought he was here. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, a little disappointed. And Jeff, Frozen 2, such a good flick. I am going to mm. follow up with Jeff and make sure that he sees that, because even the music in that is so... Incredible. I'm just impressed that Jeff was able to wear those Disney ears and fit his headphones over them. The whole, the whole interview, he did it. It's magic. It is magic. It's magic. There's so much to going on there. Thanks so much for joining us. Hope you have a magical day. You've been listening to Beyond the Brown and Gold on Rowan Radio 89.7 WGLS FM. You can find more episodes on your favorite podcasting platforms by searching for Beyond the Brown and Gold or Rowan Radio On Demand.